Hi guys, one of you made a specific request about rotating one of the characters in, in the alphabet the way I have rotated the box in the previous video. So I thought I'd put together this short video to showcase how that would be done. So in this case, what I want to do is I want to create a type object and I want to go ahead and make sure that I can change that type object in my attributes editor. This case is the letter S. So now with that geometry created, let me go ahead and do a couple of things. The first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that this is probably, actually I can rotate it forward this way so that we way we avoid rotating it. So let me resize it first things first. Whoops, let me actually go ahead and go to the resizing tool, make it small so that we can actually see it. And let me go ahead and place this S so that it is laying almost on the X axis. So let's go ahead and bring that up so that the bottom of it is right there. And obviously I'm eyeballing this, you can do it by the numbers. But the main thing at this point is that we want to make sure that this pivot point is placed where we want to start the rotation, just like we did with the box. So for that, I need to move that pivot point to this point here, to the front of the S. Any of the points on the front of the S will do. And so, like I said in the box video, it doesn't have to be on the box itself, on the geometry itself, as long as it is aligned with the points on the geometry. So in this case, what I want to do is I want to go to this viewport here, and I want to bring that pivot point to this corner down here, to this corner right here. So I'll press the D key on the keyboard, press the V to snap to point, and start moving around until I get it to snap to that bottom corner. So with that done, now I know that that pivot point here is aligned with this side of the S. At this point, I want to go ahead and activate the channels for that pivot point. So I'm going to go to Edit, Channel Control, scroll down to get the pivot point channels, add them, close, and now that we have them here, I'm going to go ahead and set my timer, my timeline to the to frame one and press the S key to activate all keyframes on anything that's available in the channels box. Now let's go ahead and move to frame five. And from here on on the process is the same as we did with the box. So I'm just going to go ahead and on frame five, I'm going to rotate this. I'm going to press the, actually let's rotate on this viewport here. I'm going to press the J key to constrain. There it is. And I'm also going to uh, move my pivot point to this corner over here. So I'll press the D key, V, and using the arrows, I'll snap to that side of the S. Then I'm going to press the S key to set all keyframes at that point. Frame 10, repeat, go to press J to constrain, rotate that geometry, and then move the pivot point. Press the D key, press the V key at the same time, use the arrow to move the pivot point to the other corner and so on. So now I have the S rotating and as with the box, we see it wobbling. Now we know we take care of that wobbling when we go to the graphing editor. So if we go to the Windows animation editor, graphing editor, we can go ahead and focus on the rotation and position of our pivot and make these step animation, which is this one right here, this option right here. So if we click on that, now it becomes hold keyframes. And when we go back to our animation, we will notice that our letter is rotating just like the box. So let's go ahead and take a look at this on the perspective viewport. And as you can see, it is rotating the same way that the box would be rotating. Now, from that point on, you just need to keep on moving the pivot point position every time that you create a new set of keyframes. I hope this clears up the question.